Okay, I want to try to make something very easy to understand and very easy to see. Now, I, I understand that when somebody has a worldview, a particular worldview, it's hard to break them of that worldview. Just like this saying goes, it's easier to fool people than to convince them that they've been fooled. So let's take a look at Revelation 20. Okay, and I want to pay a particular attention to verse 11. Okay, I'll show you what I got here uh, for a timeline. You got the beginning. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. All right, and then you've got the, the birth, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And then you got the end. And then I got the thousand years here. And I got appointed before the end, and I got appointed after the end. And so that seems to be a question, uh, because there are so many people that, I mean, the majority of so-called Christians believe that the thousand years happens after the end. And I want to show you why that's wicked, evil, and every bit as evil as the theory of evolution. And not just that, I, I want to show you very plainly when that thousand years is. I want the scripture to tell you that, okay? So, here in verse 11, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. Okay, so, let's go to... Matthew 24 I'm not going to go through it's not going to be a complete study I mean this this is everywhere in the Bible but one verse ought to be enough okay so uh, in Matthew 24 whether it's Matthew 24 Mark 13 Luke 21 you're basically get at being uh, asked and answered the same question and I'll read verse 3 here for you. And he sat, talking about Jesus, he sat upon the Mount of Olives. The disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? Okay, that's key right there. They're asking, when is the end of the world? And when the end of the world happens... This is described right here in 29, 30, and 31. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, which is Jesus Christ. And then shall the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power, and great glory and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect from four winds from one end of heaven to the other so this is the end this is when it's over okay and this is important because when it's the end there's no more time for the unsaved okay so where do we get our parallel in Revelation 20 we get it in verse 11 and I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whom his face the earth and heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. So that there's no more, uh, it says, the, the earth and the heaven fled away. This is parallel with, excuse me, this is parallel with um, the, the sun being darkened, and the moon shall not give her light. All right? And there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. Okay. All right. Very, very easy to make that connection. Why is this important? Well, because the, the question is, when does that thousand years happen? Okay. So if it, if it were to happen after the end, that means after we are resurrected, if you want to make this claim, after we're resurrected, people are going to die. Okay. It, I'm, this is, it's so goofy, 
that it's going to be hard for me to to say it uh, eloquently all right so um so in revelation 20 what am i looking for here i apologize okay so in revelation 20 in the thousand years in order to say this happens after the end you have to say that there is uh, the beast is still in the world you have to say that the mark of the beast is still in the world and right here uh, I mean you could try to argue that the beheadings happen before the end and but the thing is where's that verse all oh, right there I'm sorry it's right in between but the rest of the dead live not again so there are dead people living after the end or not living in but there are dead people at the end does not make any sense at all so the end's gonna come but the there are gonna be dead people who are in Christ that are going to be just dead for a thousand years after the end I, I'm not sure if you're seeing this but this it's just straight up goofy it doesn't make any sense and I'll tell you why it's wicked is because you're telling the unsaved to wait until Jesus comes and then you'll have a thousand years to repent and that's that's a terrible thing to teach because when it's the end it's the end there is no more time for the unsaved this is the judgment or judgment of all mankind both dead and living okay that's when the end comes so if you tell them to wait until after the end you're just telling them stay put don't believe in Jesus and then when the end comes you're gonna go to hell okay that's basically what you're telling them that's not you're not preaching everlasting life you're preaching the kingdom of hell in a sense right you're preaching you're telling people that you're teaching people to go to hell it's wicked it's pure wickedness it's every bit as wicked arguably more wicked than the theory of evolution it's ridiculous and it just makes a mess of the scripture because you're not getting this anywhere else in the Bible there's nowhere in the Bible that supports the idea that the end comes and then there's a thousand years and these people constantly say Jesus reigns for a thousand years and that's not found anywhere in the Bible it says that we live and reign with Christ a thousand years we're living in this period right now in this flesh at this uh, in uh, I'm sorry this corruptible flesh right now this is only a period of time this is not forever this world is not forever this world is coming to an end and I showed you very plainly it shouldn't be complicated it should be fully understood easily understood that there is coming an end and, Je and Jesus is asked very clearly very plainly when shall these things be in the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world this world is coming to an end and I, you know I just don't I don't know if people are incapable of connecting the dots so many people I it doesn't seem like it's that complicated to me this should be very simple stuff really very simple easy to understand sort of stuff that there's coming an end and then when the end comes that's the great day of the Lord that's judgment day that's when the first the dead in Christ are risen and then the, those of us that remain are risen up with them to meet the Lord in the air and then our enemies will be gathered down below at our feet and they will all be destroyed and uh, so that's where you get that uh, tell uh, Till I make thine enemies thy footstool right okay so and then the there's gonna be a new heaven and a new earth okay so when there's a new heaven and a new earth there's no more pain no more suffering no more death 
So if this is all when Jesus comes back, so you can't have Jesus coming back in a new heaven, a new earth, no more death, and then have a thousand years of what? And so people got to think what it is that they are believing because what this idea that this thousand years happens after the end does not make any sense at all. Do you have unsaved people living after the end? If you do, you got a bad doctrine. Okay? And if you don't have unsaved people living after the end, what's the point of a thousand years? And then you've got the trouble of answering verse 11, which these people continuously ignore because it doesn't fit their doctrine. Verse 11 is clearly the return of Jesus. It clearly parallels Matthew 24, uh, 29 through 31, the return of Jesus. All right? It's a clear parallel. So you can't, where's Jesus going? You're assuming that he's already here on earth in this thousand years. So where did he go? Well, it doesn't say he went anywhere. But then all of a sudden he's coming again. You can't ignore verse 11. All right, so when Jesus comes, it's very clear, very simple, very easy to understand. When Jesus comes back, this is the great day of the Lord. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of it, those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man, according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the books of life, or in the book of life, was cast into the lake of fire. So we've got a, this judgment coming. Okay, some will, uh, some will uh, raise, will, uh, what's, what's that the verse in Daniel? Uh, let me find that real fast. There. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting content. Okay. And so uh, it's very simple. The whole Bible winds up with this, that the end is coming. And when the end comes, Jesus makes all things new. Okay, so that leaves only one possibility, and that is we are in this thousand-year period right now. So when we put our faith in Jesus Christ, and we confess that the, Jesus is the Lord, and that God has raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. And we, when we are born again of the Spirit of God, we are resurrected. We go from being dead to being alive in Jesus Christ. So, we are spiritually resurrected when we are born again. And the fulfillment of that resurrection is when Jesus comes back and we are raised from the earth to meet him in the air. And so shall we forever be with the Lord, and I'll share one more verse before I end this. Okay, just to give you a, a kind of a clearer understanding. Because I love this stuff, man. This is very cool stuff. So, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Okay, and you read the verse before, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. All right, for this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. All right, so this is what happens when Jesus comes. When Jesus comes, it is the end. All right, so don't 
be teaching people that they can wait until after Jesus comes and then they'll have a second chance. There is no second chance. Your chance is right now. Right here, right now. 